I immediately hit the ground. Find out why coming up. St. John's parents leave court with a ruling in hand. Who learned a lesson coming up? Plus police on the scene as a man is found floating. We've got the latest. The National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. Gunshots rang out in the Seabreeze Imperial Park area this morning, leaving residents shaken and police on the hunt for a suspect. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keisha Latterly. And I'm Kendino Knowles, as always. It's good to have you with us. Well, Arjun and Noel Ferguson has details of the high-speed chase and the alleged crime that set off this morning's episode. One man is in police custody and another is on the loose after being involved in a police chase and shootout early this morning. Our ZNS News was at the scene just moments after the incident occurred. Police say a stolen vehicle with two males was spotted in the Seabreeze area and a chase ensued. ASP Cleophus Cooper of the Eastern Police Station fills us in. The officers saw this vehicle was a Honda Stream. Um, they gave chase and at the junction of Bay Lily Drive and Seabreeze Lane. Uh, the vehicle lost control. The driver was able to get out of the vehicle. He ran across some yards. The officers gave chase, unable to catch him. The second person who was in the vehicle was caught by the officers while on scene. Yeah, the information is that uh, there were exchange of gunfire. Now the police chase ended here where the suspect crashed into a wall in what is believed to be a stolen vehicle. Residents in the Seabreeze area say they were in fear for their lives. I don't really feel safe because, I mean, let's face it, so uh, here were shots being fired right here, right in the vicinity of my house. One of my sons is home with me, uh, Christopher. He is coming out of this room at the same time as coming out of my uh, little office. And I told Christopher, get down, stay down, and so because those are police shots, or shots anyhow. And he's telling me the same thing, Daddy, don't go outside. I said, I'm not. I said, Christopher, go back to your room and stay down. I just finished uh, exercising, trying to get my body beautiful. And I heard about 12 to, four, 12 to 14 shots fired. I immediately hit the ground. And after I heard the shots at sea, I came outside to see what had happened. I also heard a crash. They also noted that housebreaking has been a challenge in the area for quite some time, but applauded the work of the police in that community. But the owner of the home where the car crashed says he's now faced with a big bill to have his wall repaired. First of all, the car is a stolen vehicle, I understand. So secondly, I have no real, no real recourse, okay, because they have to catch the persons and if it's a stolen vehicle, then they catch the individuals, obviously, they probably won't have access to uh, how to mean to repair my wall. Police continue to comb the area for the remainder of the morning looking for the suspect. He is described as a dark male standing about 5 feet 4 inches tall, wearing a white shirt and blue jeans. If you have any information on this incident, you're asked to contact police as soon as possible. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNES Network News. Police are tonight probing the death of a man found floating in waters at Junkanoo Beach. We're told that it was a tourist who first spot, spotted the body while swimming around 2.30 this afternoon. Our cameras were the only ones rolling as officers pulled the body from the sea. The police officers um, contacted the Defense Force and Police Marines. They came here, um, the body was taken from the water and we know that it is a black male. We are not, unable to say his age or the identity of the male at this time. Defense Force Marines spent about 20 minutes in the water trying to pull the body aboard one of their vessels. Ten minutes later, onlookers watched as the body of the man who Superintendent Lee Mondelevo believes is Bahamian was brought to shore. We have not seen any visible injuries, but as previously indicated, um, a full investigation will be done. By the time the ZNS News arrived on the scene, we were told that the tourists that had actually found the body had already left the beach. Others remained while police carried out their initial investigations. It was sad, it was shocking, you know, something for the tourists to witness, to see a dead body down there in the water, you know, someone I've snapped snap right away. It's sad. 
I thank God for our officers. They really did a great job today. You know, especially Officer Pratt. He bent over backwards and did his job. And what was the, the, the response from tourists? Everybody was uh, in shock, like, what's going on, you know? They was, some was in fear, you know, some was just shock. You know, some was just uh, wondering what's going on, you know? Obviously shaken, vendors Mona Lisa McKenzie and Joycelyn Stubbs were still in shock. I've never seen his face before, never. No, we were speculating that there was some young boys out there diving off the dock, but unfortunately it was not, you know, they said it was a gentleman like in his late 40s, probably early 50s, so we don't know his face from around him. And while some speculate that the man is the victim of drowning, officers issued this appeal to beachgoers. Please be very, very careful and always designate someone who can dive, who can swim properly and try not to venture out far from the shores or make sure that you can, you know, you're sta able to stand when you go into the waters. Another disappointing blow for those 26 students who filed a legal action against the Anglican Central Education Authority for its decision to cancel graduation and prom ceremonies for the St. John's class of 2013. Chief Justice Sir Michael Barnett handed down a 26-page ruling in favor of the Anglican Central Education Authority and not the students and their parents. Jimmy Nita Swain was in court. Disappointment would aptly describe the faces of parents who filed out of court this afternoon after Chief Justice Sir Michael Barnett's rejecting all the claims the parents hope would have meant the recompensation of a combined $29,000 for a graduation and prom which were cancelled by the Anglican Board. 26 2013 graduates of St. John's College filed legal action against the Anglican Central Education Authority after a series of infractions committed by some students went viral on social media including including a clip of a provocative dance. While the Chief Justice acknowledged there was a contractual agreement between the school and the students, he said the decision to cancel the ceremony was not unreasonable. He said the Anglican Central Education Authority considered all the matters collectively before it made a decision. In fact, he said he could not say that any other authority acting reasonably could not have made the same decision. Speaking to the particulars of the matter, the Chief Justice pointed out that 17 students participated in Ditch Day, five participated in the promotion of the video and two were found with cell phones. The Chief Justice did however express sympathy on behalf of students and their parents who were not found to have participated in any misconduct. He said no amount of money could compensate them for the disappointment they undoubtedly endured by not culminating their high school career with a traditional graduation exercise. He said he hoped that the defendants could find a way to reimburse the 300 to those students who were not directly involved. Outside of court, Vice Chancellor Diane Stewart said it was an unfortunate set of circumstances, but she feels the right decision was made. I just believe that it's been a learning experience for everybody. And I think we need to learn from it and to, and to move on. It is, there was no legal obligation to do so, but we will, the diocese will look at the ruling, consider it, and they will decide whether or not they will make any decisions as a result of this ruling. Now, attorney Christina Galanos, who represented the parents, had no comment following the Chief Justice's ruling. The issue of costs will be discussed next month when both parties return to court. Chimanita Swain, ZNS Network News. Is the video of Cubans being physically abused at the detention center a fraud? This is a question that has been the bone of contention between protest groups in Miami and the Bahamian government for weeks now. But with both sides refusing to back down, it appears as though this matter won't go away anytime soon. Tonight, Minister of Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell says the Cubans have admitted to staging that video, but members of the Cuban community are questioning where the minister got his information. Our Janae Noel Ferguson has both angles. They now agree that the video is fake. Oh, they agree? Well, that now? I mean, I saw it in the Tribune. They said, yep, it was staged, right? They claim it was staged on something that happened, but... We know now it's a fake. This is the latest revelation of that video purporting abuse of the detention center released online by Cuban protest group, the Democracy Movement, led by Ramon Sanchez, who continues his hunger strike over the controversial matter over in Miami. But Sanchez says his group never admitted to the video being staged. Tribune is saying that we staged that 
what, 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 what he's trying to do is a cover-up, okay? And he's fooling everybody. And he doesn't want to have the Bahamian people know the truth. So the Tribune came out saying that, that, that we had to, that, 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 that the incident happened, but that we were frustrated with the fact that we could not denounce it, uh, we had nothing to denounce it, and that we staged the video. I give you my word that that video is not staged. The Tribune's article attributes an American TV spokesperson for admitting that the detainees depicted their version of an incident that they claimed had occurred. Now, we called representatives from American TV several times and left messages, but up until press time, our calls were not returned. The detention center is not optimum, but it's not inhumane. And so obviously you need to do things to improve the security and the safety of the people. The main thing I'm concentrating on is to make sure nobody's in the detention center. Um, you know, so to, to get them out as quickly as possible, so that the, because that's the real issue. People have been there too long. And UNHCR has to bear some responsibility for that because they took too long to process uh, people. In the meantime, he says the Bahamas is doing what they can to improve the conditions at the detention center. Out of an abundance of caution, we should have a judicial authority and a cleric have a look at all the evidence, review it, and make recommendations to us, and that's, that's what we're planning to do. And this is something that Sanchez says they're pleased about. The fact that the Bahamas uh, has acknowledged that the uh, center is not up to uh, international standards, but it, it will upgrade it. In the meantime, those six Cuban nationals at Fox Hill are expected to remain there. For the ZNS News Network, I'm Janae Noel Ferguson. Meantime, Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell says he hasn't wavered on the enforcement of immigration policy in order to ensure that Bahamians are first priority for any jobs in the country. Well, the National Training Agency is now in place, and uh, so hopefully that's going to help kick in the training of people who uh, can learn to work in people's homes and, um, you know, all the, all the etiquette which goes with working in someone's homes because uh, people complain, employers complain that uh, um, the Bahamian housekeepers uh, don't respect their privacy, intervene in their family affairs, that there are security concerns and so on and so forth. Now, Minister Mitchell notes that a number of programs have been put in place to ensure that Bahamians are properly trained, leaving no excuses for employers to seek non-Bahamian employment. With every policy which this administration advances, you have these howls of protest because nobody bothers to read or to actually f figure out what you said precisely. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was really driven by one newspaper that whose work permit was turned down unless they found a Bahamian to understudy. And I mean that. They won't get the permit unless they have an understudy for that position. That's what I mean to do. Mm -hmm. The principle of Bahamians first is unassailable. And it goes like this. Unless there's a Bahamian available for the job, you're not going to get the work permit. That's it. And that, I, that doesn't change at all. In our first look at whether that mid-level low-wage dump showers over parts of the northwest Bahamas is slowly pulling away towards the west, but outside of our studios just now, we have cloudy skies, temperature 77 degrees, relative humidity on the rich side at 89%, winds out of the north-northeast at 5 knots, barometric pressure 1,017.0 millibars, that's 30.03 inches, and it is falling. But stay tuned, temperatures around the family of islands, travel and boating forecast is still to come. Well, straight ahead, a 23-year-old man in court today who won't believe the charges against him. And a very special summer camp wraps up. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by Shell Helix Ultra. Performance you can see.